why the Ainu people's DNA is so unique. Before Japan became Japan, there were the Ainu, a people of forests, fires, and forgotten stories. They didn't speak Japanese. They didn't follow the emperor. Pushed to the edges, stripped of their language, and cut off from their land, the Ainu were nearly erased. But they endured. And now their genes, their culture, and their voice are rising again. Who are the Ainu? What secrets lie in their DNA? This is the untold legacy of Japan's first people. The Ainu were essentially one of the original peoples of Japan, especially in areas like Hokkaido, Sakhalin, and the Kuril Islands. They speak a unique language unrelated to Japanese. They also practice animist traditions centered on nature, animals, and spirits. Physically, they have often been described as having lighter skins and more body hair than surrounding East Asian populations. Traits that early observers noted, although such differences can be quite variable among individuals. These specific traits make them stand out and have led to many misconceptions, especially early on in their history. In recent years, Ainu culture as portrayed in popular anime such as Golden Kamui has brought them some attention. However, this visibility is a long overdue chapter in a history of forced assimilation. During the Meiji era, the Japanese government pushed hard to modernize the whole country. Unfortunately, this included suppressing Ainu traditions, banning their language, and taking their land. As a result, most Ainu people today live without a clear connection to their ancient roots and only manage to get by with rudimentary knowledge of their ancestry. Most scientists believe the Ainu share substantial ancestry with the ancient Yeoman people, although some aspects of their ancestry continue to be studied and refined as new evidence emerges. For clarity, the Yeoman people were hunter-gatherers who lived in Japan over 10,000 years ago. And as proof of this relation, the Ainu have managed to keep many of the Yeoman cultural traits, such as fishing, hunting, and animist beliefs. As for the Yeoman branch itself, a 2021 nature study analyzed the genome of a 2,500-year-old yeoman individual from Japan and found that the yeoman people were an early and distinct branch of East Asian ancestry. The research showed that they likely came from Southeast Asia using a coastal migration route that possibly passed through Taiwan. But as late as the 1800s, Japan's expansion into Hokkaido, Sakhalin, and the Kuriles pushed the Ainu to the edges of society. And as a gesture of recognition, the government designated them as former Aborigines in 1899 and gave them Japanese citizenship. However, this was only a ploy to erase their identity and take their land. Traditional religious practices like tattooing and animal sacrifice were banned, and their territory was given to Japanese settlers. Ultimately, the Ainu were forced into low-paying labor and treated as primitive or uncivilized by mainstream Japanese society. The Japanese government only officially recognized the Ainu as an indigenous group in 2019, long after a motion was passed as far back as 2008 in the Japanese parliament. Recent DNA studies have revealed a lot about the Ainu people and their deep connection to Japan's past. Most male Ainu belong to Y-DNA haplogroups, DM55, which is shared with ancient yeoman remains. Some also carry haplogroup C-M217, found in Siberian and Central Asian populations. Altogether, this suggests a mix of influences. Mitochondrial DNA, which is usually passed down from mothers, shows about half of the Ainu material lineages are unique, while the other half overlap with the nearby groups like the Niviks and the Koryaks in Russia. At least, this shows both isolation and some interaction with neighboring groups. In the same vein, autosomal DNA, which comes from both parents, paints a more complete picture. Studies suggest modern Ainu have about 66-79% to 79 ancestry from the Yeoman people. The rest comes from two sources. These are the Okots culture, who are seafaring people from Northeast Asia. Then you also have some genetic input from the Yayoi Japanese. This shows the Ainu are not purely yeoman, 
in origin, but a unique blend of ancient and later populations. We mentioned earlier that the Yayoi themselves are indeed migrants. Based on the DNA sampling of present-day populations and ancient remains, one or more key finding is that the Ainu were genetically closer to people in northeast Siberia than to the highland East Asians like Tibetans. They are also more distantly related to modern Japanese than any other Asian group. In contrast, they also share a few gene traits with other East Asians, like the ADH gene cluster, which is responsible for alcohol metabolism. During all these years, the Ainu have always been misunderstood by both Japanese and Western scholars. Some early researchers described them as Caucasian based on their appearance. The claim was that they were related to Europeans in some way by virtue of this. However, that theory has been proven false. It turns out these outdated ideas were rooted in more racist attitudes than in real science. Even more so, a cruel children's chant called Ainu Dogs still exists today in some places, showing how deeply embedded prejudice could be. Japanese colonial officials even romanticized the Ainu as a dying race in a manipulative move to render their land, language, and customs irrelevant. Ainu tattooing, for example, was seen as barbaric, when in reality it had deep spiritual meaning. To make matters worse, some Japanese politicians continue to promote the idea that Japan is racially pure. This stance ignores the country's true ethnic origins and diversity, even after official recognition. One more problem is cultural appropriation. For instance, non-Ainu people sometimes use Ainu symbols, language, or practices without understanding or respecting their meaning. No wonder many Ainu traditions are in danger of being lost. In the same vein, the Ainu have always fought for land rights. A famous case was the Nibitani Dam dispute, where the government took sacred Ainu land for a development project. The courts later ruled that the land had been taken illegally. Also in 2023, a group of Ainu sued the Japanese government to regain traditional fishing rights. And in their case, they cited international treaties that protect indigenous practices. However, Winds of such a nature are rare. In the face of all this, many Ainu are working hard to reclaim their culture. The Yupapoi National Ainu Museum in Hokkaido was open to promote Ainu history, language, and traditions. Yupapoi means singing in a large group in Ainu. So the museum mainly showcases traditional Ainu music, dance, and lifestyle. On the genetic side, Studies have helped confirm the Ainu's deep roots in Japan. This has given its people confidence to embrace their identity. Who knew that DNA could become a tool of cultural recovery? Recognition by organizations like UNESCO has also helped protect and promote Ainu culture. Still, daily life for many Ainu remains shaped by the past, and this takes the form of economic disadvantage, lack of political representation, and even continued cultural misunderstanding. The Ainu story is not unique. Around the world, other indigenous peoples have faced similar struggles. The Sami of Northern Europe, for example, were colonized by the Scandinavian countries and forced to give up their language and way of life. Like the Ainu, they have their own language, clothing, and mythology, and they continue to fight for their rights and recognition. The San people in southern Africa, known for their click languages and hunter-gatherer traditions, were displaced by colonizers and pushed into poverty. Their languages and land rights are also under threat, much like the Ainu. In the United States, Native Americans have used genetics to reconnect with their ancestors and rebuild their communities. Many tribes now run their own cultural programs, language schools, and research projects. These are steps that Ainu communities are also taking. Speaking of which, Ainu culture is often studied through its oral literature, like Yukar, and rituals such as the Bear Festival, or Jumante. Ainu communities are also working to preserve their culture electronically through digital archives, and AI like AI Perika. These tools can help revive and teach the unique Ainu language. The rediscovery of the Ainu identity 
is more than just genetic. After centuries of denial and discrimination, the Ainu are finally reclaiming their place as an important part of Japan's history. On a final note, colonization and forced assimilation were not just historical events. They still remain an ongoing challenge. And in any case, they also show how resilient indigenous cultures can thrive when given the opportunity. And just like similar marginalized races around the world, the efforts of the Ainu people to protect and promote their culture remind us that identity is not static. It evolves and survives, even under pressure. And we would do well to remember that no culture is too old or too small to matter. If you enjoyed this study of the Ainu people and culture, then hit the like button. And to stay updated on more cultural history related to DNA of ancient people, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.